ladies and gentlemen good evening and welcome to the professor g v j raju endowment lecture and academic feast that continues to be a beacon of knowledge and innovation in the realm of science and technology organized by the department of chemistry phoner lakshmiya education foundation in association with andhra pradesh academy of sciences amaravati it is an honor to host an event that celebrates the legacy of professor g j v j raju a luminary whose contributions to the field of chemistry and beyond have left an indelible mark on the academic community without further ado let us immerse ourselves in the insights and revelations that today's lecture promises to unfold it is with great pleasure and honor that we introduce our esteemed guest for the professor g j v j raju endowment lecture professor divakar tiwari professor divakar tiwari a senior scientist professor in the department of chemistry at mizoram university has distinguished himself as an eminent scholar in the field of environmental chemistry his academic credentials are rooted in a solid foundation beginning with a bachelor of science from jabalpur followed by masters in chemistry and culminating a phd from banaras hindu university varanasi focusing on metal dye complexes in solutions professor tiwari has played significant editorial roles including editor in chief of the science and technology journal and associate editor for the esteemed journals like environmental engineering research and frontiers in wastewater management his career highlighted by numerous international research assignments including positions as sta fellow in japan and research professor in korea he also contributed significantly to the field of material science and environmental engineering among his many accolades he has been recognized as an outstanding foreign researcher in korea and was awarded by the chinese academy of sciences as a visiting researcher professor tiwari has an extensive research background in advanced oxidation processes for wastewater treatment focusing on fenton like processes and the usage of ferrate his work on hybrid and functionalized materials for environmental remediation particularly in the adsorption and degradation of pollutants sets him apart he has developed cutting edge electrochemical sensors for detecting arsenic and micro pollutants showcasing his commitment to the environmental monitoring and safety with over 140 research papers and several book chapters to his name professor tiwari has made substantial contributions to the field evidenced by his high h index of 37 and numerous citations around 4300 his publications cover a broad spectrum of topics including biochar derived nano composites plasmonic materials and advanced materials for environmental remediation apart from academic and research expertise professor tiwari also play a crucial role in administrative positions professor tiwari is an executive council member at sagar central university mizoram university and central university of punjab he is also the director for drdo industry academia center of excellence at mizoram university professor tiwari's work not only advances the scientific knowledge but also addresses the critical environmental challenges ranging from pollution remediation to substantial water management his leadership in academic and research capacities combined with his efforts to mentor the next generation of scientists marks him as a pivotal figure in his field now please join me in extending a warm welcome to professor divakar tiwari as we look forward to an enlightening and inspiring lecture the students so it's a great privilege and i am honored this afternoon that i'll be delivering a lecture we delivering a talk that is related to novel materials in the trace detection of arsenic and some pharmaceuticals 
a laboratory to device development. The lecture which was shown in the previous slide, the morning I was in Siddhartha College, there I delivered and for this, the, uh, this endowment lecture, uh, I decided to deliver on this. Uh, I communicated with uh, Dr. Rao, Professor Rao that I will be delivering here so on this topic. So this is something that we have started and then uh, the lab study, how can we translate it into the device development? That is kind of the work that we have done and uh, this is an important area. I was just few days back, I was in uh, Delhi also uh, in some of the meetings and all. So a lot of the, you know, the reforms and transforms are going on in terms of what you say that the educational system, how do we translate it, how do we reform it, the government of India level and all that. And there was one of the, you know, the discussion topic was there that as we all know that our Honorable Prime Minister used to talk about that the target, they have been fixing a different targets, targets. The one of the target on which day night they are they are working that is the you know they are expecting to have the country self reliant or i'll say that the viksit bharat by 2047 we have to be you know the the country will be placed as a you know developed or you can say that the viksit bharat and we are moving in this amritkal as used to he used to mention so the discussion was like that by that time i don't think we will be there or not or you know but responsibility is on you greater responsibility that is lying on you and if we are looking for that the viksit bharat we are you know you have to think one component which is very important that is the we have to be you know on the technology leader Unless until we are the technology leader, we cannot achieve that particular goal. And in addition to that, the technology leader, if you want the country to be the technology leader, at the same time, what will be the educational system? Or the in terms of the education or in terms of the knowledge system, do we have to be the leader? So that is also one of the component. And under that, lot of reforms are going on, lot of Time to time you may also be you know, listening or hearing that many things are going on at the national level at the, you know, I was also involved in the some of the committees and all that. So many things are there, particularly we are talking about the NEPs and all that. And if you try to see that the NEP, now in the NEP, the different, you know, the components of that, sometimes people they talk about the NEP is something just to have the, you blend it, the Indian knowledge system, the Indian ethos and all that, and that is the NEP, it's not like that. NEP is something which is having the greater demand for the country, I, no, that country they have. So what are those? Those are, I will say that one of the component is that the, inter the internationalization of the education. Internationalization, in addition to the internationalization, if you look at that, Whenever we talk about the internationalization, the another component that comes, that is the R&D, the research and development. What kind of the research and development and what kind of the ecosystem has to be created in the, in the colleges or in the universities or the institutions or the HEIs, that is an important aspect. And when we talk about the R&D, R&D is also having a different, you know, the dimensions, the one dimension, how the innovation is there, how do you translate the innovation into the technology, how do you translate that into the entrepreneur and so on or the startup and so on. These are the different components that has to be created in the, you know, the, in what, in what you say that within the institution or within the HEIs that the complete ecosystem has to be created and the responsibility again it comes on you. Through that only that can be, you know, that can be achieved. So these are the few things that I wanted to share with you. Since I was, I am also looking after this as a director of the DIACOE. DIACOE is nothing but the DRDO Industry Academia Center of Excellence. If you know that in the country we will be having the 15 centers. DRDO itself now is emerging in a different direction or 
looking towards that how the academia can contribute towards the DRDO and based on that the 15 centers has been created. Hyderabad University is also having one of the center. ITs are having IT. Madras is there, IT, Kanpur, IT. You know, many centers are, 15 centers has been created, such centers. And they are closely working together the, with the DRDO and then the defense needs, the societal needs, all that they are taking care into a, through these the academia. So academia, not only the academia, the industry partners also they are looking for that and through the industry partner, the academia, industry partner, DRDO laboratories and they are working together for the nation building and all that. So this is the, in the northeastern states, this is the only center and they are t catering the needs of the, you know, of these DRDOs and all that. So I am looking after that, uh, the DR, in addition to our other, the, the institutional responsibilities or the research and all that. This is the, on the right hand side, you can see that the aerial view of the Mizoram Ministry. It's a very green campus. I will say that it is at the mountain. Lot of mountains are there, almost 800 meters from the sea level. And throughout the year, you know, the very pleasant weather is there. Uh, I'll say that the AC or the you know, air condition is not required in the room. With the fan itself, it is enough. Now itself, we are using the blankets and all that in the night time. The temperature is somewhere around these days, 18, 19 degree in the night time and daytime around 25 to uh, 26 degree Celsius. So it's a, a nice place and the university is very new, 2001 was established and I'm happy to mention that till to date, okay, we have not seen any unrest in the campus. This is something one has to learn that such a disciplined student, I have not seen such a very disciplined student and whatever the task has been given is to be given, they used to do timely. Very disciplined, very, you know, the, the place is also very disciplined. We have never, hardly you will hear the, you know, horn when they are moving. Hardly you will hear in the streets and all that. Hardly you will see that anyone is, you know, overtaking other. So these are the certain things that, and very neat and clean. The pollution, air pollution, if you go to Delhi, you will find that lot of pollution is there. But if you go in Mizoram, you will find that there is no air pollution. Clean air. Anyway, this is the campus. On the left hand side, you can see this is the Department of Chemistry. If you enter, I will, my lab is there on the right hand side. And uh, below is the, you know, the, our uh, school, the School of the Physical Sciences. Here, the, in my school, we are having the four departments, the physics, chemistry, mathematics and industrial chemistry. Like you only, we are also confined with the master's program. So master's programs are going on with the intake of the 30-31, sometimes plus minus EWS 10%. So 33 seats are there plus PhD. So these are the activities that we are having. In addition to that, we are taking care of the engineering also. Engineering, we are also having the five, uh, the engineering department. So it's a similar like yours only. And uh, on the right hand side, we are having a very beautiful, I'll say the capacity of almost thousands, the auditorium that we have. I would like to share this one of the paper which I published way back 2012. And 2017, this paper was the top cited article in this journal, that is the applied clay and science in that journal. Why this is important? Whenever you are doing, I was talking about the internationalization or I was talking about the metrics and all that. So this is an pertinent to mention that how your work is reflected, how others, they try to follow on that and when you are talking about this, the internationalization and all that. This is another journal, the Chemical Engineering Journal, one of the article that was, you know, among the top cited articles 2011 and 12, the impact factor now it is more than 15. So I am taking care of the responsibility as a editor in chief of the journal Science and Technology Journal, which is published by Mizoram University for last four five years. I am looking this journal, and this is the UGC care listed journal. The other journal, which is uh, EER, as uh, your colleague uh, already he mentioned about this journal, that one of the special issue. I also published one of the special issue in this. Yeah. So I am the associate editor of this journal for several years. 
and uh, when i was uh, working there so once i have been awarded as a you know the best researcher in korea from outside so this is i used to share with uh, my students so i would like to share with you also so once the einstein he he wrote to his son while he was writing to his son the letter he mentioned the you just see that what he wrote he mentioned that life is like a riding a bicycle to keep your balance you must keep moving so very pertinent for everyone i will say that and this is wherever you try to see it is very pertinent very important that unless until you are moving okay you cannot achieve the goal also the other one my students used to come to me they used to say that sir i am not getting the results i think something we are doing wrong so i used to say that no no you are moving in the right direction you are in a right path that's why you are not getting the results so once the swami vivekananda he just mentioned that in a day when you don't come across any problem you can be sure that you are traveling in a wrong path this is very important it's not the msc experiments that you are doing certain the procedure is given your details are given and results are coming out it's not like that in the research research is something where you know you will be facing the problem you will not get the expected result so if you are get not getting the expected results uh, result doesn't mean that you stop working there you have to think and you have to move forward then only you will be getting the results and if results are not coming or you are facing the problem that means you are moving in a right direction so anyway this is the the contents of my you know the presentation i have just divided into the like the motivation how we have been motivated working on this then introduction materials and methods results and discussion finally the conclusions and all that arsenic as you know that for this we have worked a lot lot of you know not only the recently i was doing one of the project right now we are having the i have completed two three international project one international project is going on of the dst five six other projects of the dst csir and all that i have completed so one of the project and one of the interactions were going on then when i just talked about the detection the detection system the device okay or the sensors which is a great demand in the in the country we rely a lot on the sensors lot of sensors in terms of the drdo also they are procuring when we talk about the self reliant that is the you have to have the technology to detect or those kind of the sensor we should have in our own country and as you know that the made in india okay so this is one of the area when i was discussing all that so they mentioned that why only the sensor why not the remediation the remediation and sensor why not together and you come forward and we should have a complete system with the complete system you detect it and you remediate it suppose in the remote area somewhere where the arsenic is there say the ground water is arsenic is uh, ground water is contaminated with the arsenic so you need if you have detected so the purpose is not solved the purpose ultimate purpose is that the defense people or the soldiers they should get the clean water so the remediation also has to be given together so that will they they mentioned that so we will be working on that and we will be you know introducing a complete system so that that can be given to the defense people or even through the society also so arsenic if you see that the way back there was a report published in the science so they mentioned that the dead reel trail okay the way back 1996 they mentioned seven districts in west bengal have been hit hard by the arsenic poisoning from tube wells along with the indian bangladesh border this was the report was published and you can see that on the right hand side some of the pictures in which the arsenic poisoning has been shown and these are the areas the west bengal adjoining area and the bangladesh and all that that part if you go towards the assam side northeastern part there also the part of the assam that is also having the lot of arsenic problem not only the arsenic problem they are having the arsenic they are having the iron they are having the fluoride also together all these three you know are there so they were they have asked me that why not to develop a sensor by which we can detect these together 
So we also tried, so for example, fluoride is there, for example, iron, very high content of the iron is there, and then the arsenic is there. And this the water, usually the groundwater people they used to drink, and they used to think that the groundwater is pure. The general thinking is that if the water is coming from the, you know, from the ground, I mean that the well or the boring and all that, we feel that this water is relatively clean and it is drinkable. But sometimes that water is also not drinkable. So the, the purpose of that, we have to monitor and we have to do some kind of the remediation and all that. Remediation component I will not be discussing today. So arsenic contamination, if you look at that, this picture that I could get it, and most of the, you know, the country and many places, the arsenic has been detected. Arsenic, which you know that, arsenic-3 or the arsenic-5, these are the two possible oxidation states that usually it is in the environment available. And various part, in a, not only in the, you can say that the West Bengal or the Assam part, but other part also, it varies in terms of the quantity or in terms of the concentration and all that. So, but it is, you know, contaminated except some of the states, for example, part of the Madhya Pradesh or the Rajasthan or the Orissa and all that. What will be the pathway? This is a simple picture that I could get it. And from here you can see that the different the sources, whether it is, it may be the anthropogenic or the other sources through that the arsenic is being circulated in the or entering into the environment. And you can see that either it is the volcanoes or the, you know, man-made also, for example, pesticides, for example, all that, fertilizers and all that, or through this, the refineries and all, through that also the arsenic that will be entering into the environment, and through this, the, you know, recharge of this groundwater that will be contaminating the groundwater also, or in the surface water also. In addition to this, I was looking that, why not to work for the, which is an emerging area, that is the micropollutants. Micropollutants, this is a class of the pollutants which is coming into the environment or particularly in the aquatic environment or in the water bodies. Micropollutants, large number of the, you know, the pollutants are there. I'll say that there was a report which was published in India Today, the leading magazine in India. That is in India Today, that was published way back, I think 19, uh, sorry, 2015. A report published in India Today on September 29, 2015 has attracted the attention in India. They have, a, they, they have mentioned a specifically towards the EDCs. And that's why these, these are the components, these are the pollutants known as the emerging pollutants. So they have reported towards the EDCs. EDCs is nothing but the endocrine disrupting chemicals. What they do, it uh, stated, a new study has revealed that endocrine disrupting chemicals EDCs contribute to health problems by mimicking, blocking, or otherwise interfering with the body's natural hormones. It was further stated that EDCs exposure is connected to infertility, hormone-related cancers, neurological issues, and other disorders. No EDCs that you all know, and we are always concerned when we are taking this, you know, packaged water and all that, the, this bottled water. So that is the bisphenol A. Bisphenol A is a great concern. So these are the, you know, the, the class of this, the EDCs, or I can say that in general, if you look at that, the micropollutants, I will go a little more on the, this micropollutants. That include all these pharmaceutical phthalates and all that, or the personal care products, all that it includes. So we'll be discussing on that. So micropollutant is a general term and the question it comes that why do we call it the micropollutants? Not as a just simple, the pollutants. The micropollutant that means that they are entering, they are coming into the low level. Low level when I say that they are somewhere around microgram per liter to the, you know, the, the, the milligram per, uh, microgram per liter or to the, or in general you can say PPM to the PPB level they will be entering into the aquatic environment. Question is that from where they are coming. For example, say the pharmaceuticals are there, antibiotics are there, you are using, people are using the antibiotics and when the antibiotics, you, it enters in your body, I will say that maximum 30 to 40 percent is being metabolized 
rest of the antibiotics are excreted either through the feces or through the urine and all that that will be coming into the wastewater the sewage wastewater and there the sewage wastewater is a conventional sewage treatment plants are there and that there it will be treated and if you try to see that what is the 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 level or what is the you know the quality of the water which has been treated by the conventional treatment plants the conventional treatment plant that says that if you try to see it says that the these pollutants for example the pharmaceuticals and many more okay they are not completely removed they are coming almost at the low level somewhere around ppm parts per million to the parts per billion so that is why it is called as the micro pollutants and they are one of the emerging pollutants and that has need to be monitored in the country we do not have such kind of the the you know the monitoring system i also try to submit the proposals but it is not appreciated people they feel that what is the need of monitoring this once the water is treated but it is there is a need if you try to see that the developed countries for example us or korea or the uk or the germany and all that you will find that they are having the systematic way of detecting all these micro pollutants not only the one or two large number of the such pollutants they used to monitor monitoring in the two ways the monitoring is that the influent as well as the effluent is being monitored what is the level the influent and what is the effluent monitor the the concentration and then only they are discharged into the water bodies if they are not monitored properly then naturally it will be contaminating one of the the question is that what is the need of that there is a need for example i'll say that a simple example is that if every day you are drinking the water in which a minute quantity a little quantity of the antibiotic is there and every day if you are drinking that such water what will happen in future future will be that that particular antibiotic will not be effective for you for any kind of curing the disease because it is being your body is being immune on that i give another example my daughter she is in korea she is you know studying so what happened she was having acute i will say that the throat infection was there and she has been given 250 mg of the antibiotic and 3 days 4 days she took it but there was no effect then i consulted here the doctor he mentioned that sir 250 mg is too less for her you have to give minimum 500 mg two times that means 1000 mg you have to give but similar like you also so you need minimum 1000 mg but in korea or in the developed countries they need only 250 multiplied by 2 means that 500 mg so 500 mg of the antibiotic is effective for them for 500 mg of the you know the antibiotic is not effective for us because our immune system in such a way developed so that we need more antibiotic but there will be a limit beyond that you cannot go so that is the reason we used to say that you know the monitoring of such the micro pollutants in the water bodies is an important and that need to be detected so anyway this is the a simple wastewater treatment plant if you try to see that there are the usually there are the three units one is the primary treatment second is the secondary treatment and then followed by the chlorination and all that primary treatment all those the impurities has been removed secondary treatment you know, biological treatment are there with the biological activity they increase it and then they are treating whatever the you know the degradable impurities are there that will be degraded in the secondary treatment using this biological activity and then followed by the chlorination whatever the you know biological activity is there so all this so that can be pathogens and all that that will be treated and that will be removed and then if you try to see that the you know whatever the effluent is coming out from out of that so there it may be possible that some kind of the micro pollutants may enter and uh, maybe at the low level and all that so that has to be so us epa also has given a different definition or i will say that the specific definition about this the micro pollutants and all that that has been stated here i will not read on that this is the another way by which you can see that all these micro pollutants what is the the movement and how they are entering into the water bodies whether it is the lake water whether it is the fresh water whether it is the you know the aquifers or you can say that the ground water how they are being contaminated that has been you know in this picture you can try to see that whether you know 
the residential area or the health care system through that for municipal ways and all that there may be uh, you know the surface water is being there contaminated or the aquifers and all that may be contaminated through this the recharge of this the water some of the reports are being you know i was also trying to see that in the in the in the country is there anybody is doing such kind of the studies and all that so i was looking that the ground water pollution due to you know the organic micro pollutants uh, is becoming a major cause of concern in many parts of the world where water sources are on the de decline so india the largest user of the ground water and the presence of the micro pollutants in ground water it is going to be or it is being it is going to be a grave concern so micro pollutants in grave the ground water a grave concern one of the article this was published in addition to that a paper the organic micro pollutants in ground water of india so a review article that was published but i have gone through not much has been given so <coughs> this is the when i was looking that one study was there in that study the hyderabad the city of the hyderabad the water quality has been analyzed in terms of the micro polluter usually what happens the water quality we used to measure it today also i was visiting one of the college i just asked that the water quality how do you, what are what are the parameters that you used to measure they said that we are measuring whatever the drinking water i they are they are testing this drinking water also they used to test it in terms of the sulfate is there phosphate is there tds is there ph is there these are the parameters or some of the heavy metals they try to test it or they try to test it for example the bod and the cod beyond that hardly they do it so but if you try to see that all these parameters okay in addition to this if you are trying to look the micro pollutants these parameters cannot help you you need something advanced that has to be tested and for that testing the particularly the micro pollutants you need some more the advanced analytical tools with that you can detect it anyway another you know the slide if you try to see that how to make sure your water is safe to drink if you are the pregnant you are you know hydrating the two persons okay the quality and quantity of the water you drink is more important now that you are hydrating for the two is what you need to know about what comes out of your the tap this is the status of the global status the known what the facts are there fact says that if you try to see the country like ours more than the L, the 31 to the 100 if you try to see with the color 31 to the 100 the different pharmaceuticals are being detected in the water bodies this is the global status white color they don't have the data the african countries and all that they don't have the data but the data where it is available that i just try to say uh, share it here with this the you know the ground water pollution due to the different kind of the uh, pharmaceuticals different i can say that they have quantified in terms of the numbers so numbers i will say that 31 to the 100 the numbers of the pharmaceuticals are being detected in our country so we were trying to use the, the the clay materials for the if you try to see that we are trying to do the two aspects the one aspect is that the remediation the other aspect was that the detection and detection the laboratory studies that we have done and then we try to do the device development for that the device development i did one of the international project in that international project the first part was that the laboratory experiments and that we have done the laboratory experiment and then the funding agency itself asked us that why not you you know move towards that device development associate with the industry what now drd diacoe they are also asking you have to search the industry partner and you have to work and then you have to develop that device so we have gone for the second stage and then we have developed the sen sensor the device itself so these are the the base material what we try to utilize it that the the uh, the clay materials clay materials these are the phyllosilicates all you know about it they are the you know stacked with the tetrahedral this the silicate and the octahedral the aluminate and all that they are you know stacked and they are they will be having the certain charge based on that or they will be having on the surfaces the you know the hydroxyl groups and all that through that 
some kind of the sometimes they are you know bonding with some kind of the, the different compounds and all that or sometimes they are making the exchange of the say the bigger of the long chain uh, organic compounds and all that they are introducing these are the kind of the studies they used to do or they used to play with this and this is the clay materials itself is a natural filter media why because it is the clay itself is a very porous material through that porous material and they are very good in the removing the, the pollutants also but when you talk about the organic uh, contaminants, they are not very organophilic or not very hydrophobic sometimes. So what happens? Though such kind of the pollutants is difficult to remove. For example, arsenic if it is there. Look at that arsenic. Arsenic is having in the... No, it is kind of the RC anions are there. So oxy anions are there. So these oxy anions, they are not in the you know, cationic form. So they are in the anionic form. Sometimes they are difficult to remove using simply this or the you know all this the the clay materials so then the need was that what we have done we have modified this arsenic sorry the uh, the clay materials and then we try to utilize it in the electrochemical detection system modification a simple strategy was it adopted a strategy was that material has to be developed material has to be synthesized in a simpler manner and then that material we are we have used it when we have devised uh, developed the device that time we have used it with the help of you know the carbon paste electrode and that carbon paste electrode that we try to use it so this is the one of the publication that we had this is a simple strategy that we have adopted and based on this simple uh, the, the methodology we have uh, you know fabricated the electrode electrode is a very simple it is like a tube is there okay the carbon powder along with the paraffin oil and then our material that is the clay based material we have modified it with the help of this the cation and the surfactant say SDTMA and then bentonite was you know this has been introduced with that and then the Teflon tube has been filled or packed with this the material and then there was a titanium wire with that the connectivity we have made it and then using this uh, simple cyclic voltammetry that we did some of the experiments and all that. Materials are being characterized by the same images. You can see that the bentonite and the modified bentonite is a heterogeneous material. And then you can see on the right hand side the IR data or you can see this the XRD data with the help of this XRD. I will not go that much in detail but with this XRD data you can see that the you know the interplanar distance that has been slightly increased and this organic cation has been introduced within this the cation exchange capacity of these clay materials are there there is in the interlaminar the cations which are likely to be exchanged we try to exchange with the help of a bigger you know the the, the cations and once you will be introducing the bigger or the long chain compound within that gallery what will happen this will get propped up so slightly it is being uh, propped up so these are the you know the electrochemical the impedance data that we have collected you can see that the the solution resistance and then the another quantity which is the rct the charge transfer transfer when we have utilized the our material the charge transfer the resistance which has been significantly in uh, you know the decreased with the help of uh, this the materials and all that earlier which was uh, 6342 which is reduced to somewhere around 3000 half of that that value and these are the cyclic voltammogram that has been obtained for the arsenic 3 and we got very nice you know the oxidation and the reduction peak and all that at different ph the concentration dependence studies which shows that increasing the concentration definitely it has been the 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 the, the, the current has been increased and based on that we have calculated the lod the limit of detection the limit of detection for this the electrochemical detection of the arsenic 3 was you know 0 0.0036 microgram per liter the PPB level. Up to that level we have detected if you try to see that the permissible level of the arsenic is total arsenic I am talking about. It is somewhere around 50 PPB. So ours is much much below to that <coughs> and then we try to do with in terms of in presence of the different interfering ions. The most important aspect was there can we utilize the same system for the real system so real water so real water which was collected from the river 
and that was you know analyzed and then we tried to do it we got a very good calibration line so we feel that it may be helpful in that so one of the paper which we published for the detection of the uh, cadmium and the lead cadmium and lead was detected i will show about that the real challenge what that we have real challenge is that as i mentioned that arsenic is having the two oxidation states arsenic 3 and the arsenic 5 most of the electrochemical studies those who are doing they will have observed that arsenic 5 detection is very difficult because the high potential is required arsenic 5 directly uh, you know most of the people what they try to do it they are chemically they are reducing it and arsenic 3 and then they are detecting arsenic 3 is relatively easy to detect but arsenic 5 is a real challenge that to be detected directly so what we did we have done here I will, I am showing that the cadmium and the lead we have detected simultaneously, but at the same time we have also tried with the arsenic also, arsenic 3, arsenic 5 and so on and the direct det detection also we try to do it and we have done it, we have succeeded on that. A di slightly different material we prepared, we have uh, you know prepared the same bentonite we have used, the base material is nothing but the bentonite, we have grafted with this the organic, the silane that is the trichloro octadecyl cinase that has been you know uh, the grafted with the, the, uh, the, the bentonite and then we got this kind of the nanocomposite material and this nanocomposite material not only this nanocomposite material we have introduced the silver and the gold nanoparticles also and silver and gold nanoparticles we have obtained it by a greener method I will say that using this the you know the avocado leaf avocado leaves we have taken this is a very common in our place the avocado leaf uh, we have taken and with the help of this avocado leaf the extract in a very simple way we got the extract a simple in the water itself we have taken at uh, not uh, boiling also at uh, somewhere around 70 to 80 degree we have just you know heated it up and then we will be getting this extract and this extract directly it is reducing and making the colloidal particles of the silver and gold which has been characterized also simple and this is the we try to do this phytochemicals which has been extracted we try to do some kind of the qualitative test on the right hand side corner you can see that what are the components likely to be there what the standard methods that we followed alkylnitanins or saponins and all that so this the this time instead of using the you know the carbon paste electrode we try to use the glassy carbon electrode based on that glassy carbon electrode that we have you know obtained it we did it the, all these experiments so these are the material preparation that we have done the silane grafted murder bentonite and then we have impregnated the silver and the gold or you can say that that you know decorated with silver and the gold nanoparticles these are the and then the fabrication of the electrode was very simple I will say that these are the glassy carbon electrode that uh, basically we have used it on this glassy carbon electrode we have just you know made uh, we made it, made, uh, make it clean it and then the modifier solution that is the 4 milligram of the nanocomposite plus 4 ml of the mixed solvent that is the one, 1 raised to 1 DMF and deionized water and on the surface the polished surface of the glassy carbon electrode by the drop costing method we have just introduced one drop of this your solution of this nanomaterial evaporated the water or the solvent and then directly we have utilized this the electrode for this the detection these are the some of the characterization very quickly i will go that the silver and the gold the characteristic peaks has been observed observed in the uv spectra uh, plasmonic peak on the IR data, you can see that the additional peak which has been occurred somewhere around 2,924-2,862 the centimeter inverse or 1473 or 1481 uh, that is the, the, the organic compound which has been introduced that confirms on that. That is not that important. The same images, when we were trying to take the same images, there was another thing that how to get the same image of the electrode so what we did we have taken the glassy carbon sheet we have purchased and the that sheet has been introduced okay for the gc uh, bear surface and then the you know when we have introduced a bn or the tcbn or the silver or the gold based materials you can see that the very stacked or you can this is the heterogeneous structure of this the uh, the bentonite and then when we have introduced with this the uh, the organic silane and then the silver and the gold particles a fine particles you know which is not been aggregated also on the surface 
that has been obtained. These are the some of the EDX data with that we have confirmed that the organic molecule has been introduced as well as the silver and the gold peaks that has been observed here. These are the TEM images. With the help of these TEM images, we try to get the, the, you know, the D values and all that. That has been well correlated with the silver and the gold nanoparticles. The size of the particles also somewhere around 20 to 25 nanometers and a very spherical. And one thing which was very important that using this, the materials, what happened? The silver and the gold nanoparticles are not agglomerated or not clumped together. So they will be, you know, a, a single integrated type of the, the silver and the gold nanoparticles are distributed on the surface. And when we talk about the AFM images, with the help of this atomic force, microscopic images we try to get, and we try to calculate what is the surface roughness of the surface. The surface roughness that we obtained for the silver or the gold based material, 17.6 nanometers and 11 point the 9 nanometers, and kind of the pillars is being formed on the surface based on this, the what the you know, the organic molecule that has been introduced on the surface. These are the more some, you know, TEM images of that. Important aspect whenever you are doing this electrochemical studies, that is the, you know, the equivalent circuit or electrochemical, you know, the characterization of the electrodes. So electrochemical characterization that we have conducted using this, the impedance spectroscopy with the help of this impedance spectroscopy, the first component, first part was that the specific surface area using this randall savick equation that we have done, the scan rate studies, the excitation of this, the, you know, the volts per second or volts per minute, how you are applying on this, the working electrode. So based on that, the, we have done and the, the specific or the electroactive surface area which was obtained for the silver and the gold nano, the based materials or the electrodes, it is 0 0.539 to 10 to the power minus of 3 when the Bayer GCE was their glassy carbon electrode was 0 0.269 into 10 to the power minus of 3. That means that it is significantly being increased. On the right hand side you can see that the, in the table the RCT which I used to, I, I mentioned that the charge transfer, the resistance that has been decreased from 16 to 3.13 that means that almost 5 times okay, the charge transfer resistance has been decreased. These are the detection of the arsenic and arsenic 3 and arsenic 5 directly we try to do it using this electrode and what you can see that the the LOD, the potential at which the arsenic 3 is being detected and arsenic 5 is being detected is quite separate and much much higher for the arsenic 5, somewhere around 0.13 or something like that. And for the, you know, for the arsenic 3 it is somewhere around very close to zero potential. So what happened? Through that, the LOD which we have detected is uh, for arsenic 3 0 0.037 and LOD was detected for arsenic 5 was 0 0.087 parts per billion. And this is the real matrix. We did it. What real matrix means that the water we have collected and in that water is, you know, spiked with the arsenic 3 and then we try to do the LOD value and it is well a good correlation line that we have obtained and uh, the LOD was uh, calculated which is some similar like the previous case. And then similarly, arsenic 5 has been conducted for the real water sample. And here again, we have spiked it. And then the recovery in analytic, no, electrolytical techniques, always there is a term they try to use it, that recovery. How much is the recovered? So recovery is somewhere around 104, 95% to the 104%, which is quite acceptable in the analytical processes and all that. Then there was a question that can we detect both together. So we tried the arsenic 3 as well as the arsenic 5 and you can see that very nice the two different peaks. Okay, The peaks are being uh, obtained for the arsenic 3 and arsenic 5 and through this we try to calculate the, uh, the LOD value. The limit of detection which was for arsenic 3 was 0 0.04 and arsenic 5 was 0 0.049. So these are the, you know, the we, could, we could get it in a arsenic 3 and arsenic 5 simultaneously and then the stability test also we have uh, conducted the same electrode. There was another question that suppose the electrode has been fabricated, how long can be used? What will be the shelf life of the electrode? So that also we try to do it. So for example say 
zero hours to the three days we try to do it and then repeated use of that the electrode also that we try to do it and then the RSD value was very very low the RSD value that we obtained. These are the simultaneous detection of course the peaks are not that sharp as you have seen the previously but they are they can be detected even in the real water system that we have taken means that the some kind of the sometimes the spring water sometimes the river water sometimes the tap water like that we try to collect it and spike it with this arsenic 3 and arsenic 5 and then we try to detect it and we got we could we are able to detect or this arsenic 3 and the arsenic 5 simultaneously there was a question on the the micro pollutants so before that we did not do any work on the micro pollutants then we try to to do with the micro pollutants for example the pharmaceuticals the two different pharmaceuticals sulfamethoxazole and sulfamethazine and these two are already published uh, in the two of the journals so these two when we try to do using the you know our uh, the fabricated electrode the detection of this sulfamethoxazole or sulfamethazine so what we observed that the cyclic voltammetry that oxidation of these two compounds has been occurred but the reduction is not there means kind of the irreversible process that is taking place on the electrode surface. So based on that we try to do it the, the detection of uh, these two the pollutants and these are the, the PS dependence uh, data and uh, the oxidation largely controlled by the proton transfer reaction and the very good peak that we, we, we are getting somewhere around the pH 4.5 then we try to do it in the pH 4.5 all these two the pollutants. So this is the you know the, the calibration line we try to get it using this the silver and the gold electrodes for the sulfamethoxazole. The LOD was 0 0.02 much much below to the you know at the PPB level very low level you can, we can detect it and then when we try to use the gold based material it was 0 0.036 uh, uh, you know PPB level sorry parts per million level this was the silver based uh, and the gold based material for the sulfamethazine the LOD is a nice you know the calibration line we could obtain it the, the, the LOD was 0 0.027 and uh, for the silver and for the gold it was 0 0.035 milligram per liter or the PPM level some of the coexisting ions and all that that we have conducted it and then the main challenge was there the real matrix we try with the you know the real matrix on the right hand side the, uh, the parameters which we have analyzed already for the uh, water which we have taken and then we try to do it with the help of this you we can see that our good uh, calibration of course we could get it and the recovery is also 93 to 103 percent or 95 to 100 percent like that. So this is the for the sulfamethazine that we have done in the spring water. So these are the certain uh, no, the activities or the experiments that we have done and if you recall that the previous experiments the based on the what you say that the um, uh, carbon paste electrode. So these are the fine electrodes that uh, we have as I mentioned that we have associated with the company and company what they did they have the basic research data they have taken and then the electronics part they have developed it and these electrodes we have fabricated with the help of their company and this device has been developed and this device is already commercialized it is in the market also so that the device has been commercialized it is in the market that can detect directly and the different countries also they have been used it for detecting the arsenic this is giving you something the total arsenic and all that so based on that the sensor that has been developed with us this is the night time view of the Mizoram you can enjoy you can see that how the Mizoram it looks the aerial view and uh, I'm thank I, I would like to acknowledge two of my students till now 18 they have you know awarded nine they are working these two one already completed PhD but the other one is doing the PhD and the other side you can see that the, this is the one of the DRDO team they visited in our center DG, two DGs they have visited the director general of the life sciences, director general of the technology management along with the directors and all that they have visited Mizoram University we had a one workshop. So anyway thank you for your patience and listening me although it was it is too late thank you very much. Thank you for your gracing us with your enlightening lecture and I, now I invite 
our beloved HOD, Dr. A. Venkateshwaro, and our associate professor, Dr. N. Patra, to felicitate the professor. Department of Chemistry, all my faculty colleagues, my dear students and scholars for joining us in this lecture session. Thank you one and all.